Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we're diving into something super useful, creating a custom inspector using Unity's UI toolkit. This comes in handy when you're working with scriptable data like an inventory system, and you want a clean, visual, and an intuitive layout in the Unity inspector. Let me explain the problem first. I have a C-sharp mono behavior script that represents an inventory item. It contains three things, the item's name, the number of items available, and a sprite representing that item. Now, if I attach this script to any game object and fill in the name as sword, set the count to five, and assign a sprite, I won't be able to actually see that sprite inside the inspector. That's not great from a workflow perspective. And that's where a custom inspector comes in. If we can display that sprite visually in the inspector, we can quickly see what's assigned, easily edit things, and streamline our development process. So let's see how to set up a custom inspector for this script using Unity's UI toolkit. First, inside your assets folder, create a new folder called editor. This name is important. Unity requires this exact name to treat its contents as editor-only code. Next, inside that folder, create a new script called inventory editor. Now, since this won't be attached to any game object, we don't need mono behavior, nor do we need the start or update methods. So go ahead and remove all that boilerplate code. Instead, inherit from editor. But when you switch to editor, you'll see an error because the Unity editor namespace hasn't been imported. So if you're using Visual Studio, what you need to do is click on it. After clicking, it will auto-suggest what to import. You can see using Unity Editor, so you just have to simply click on it and the error will go away. Now, after doing this step, there's one final step so that we can tell Unity that we want to create a custom inspector for inventory class. We do that by adding an attribute right above the class. You need to write custom editor and inside the type of simply write the name of the script for which you want to create a custom inspector. This tells Unity, hey, use this custom inspector whenever you inspect an inventory component. Now if we save this and go to the editor and see our game object, nothing will change because we have to add one more thing. Now inside the class, we override the create inspector GUI method. If you're using Visual Studio, just right click on the screwdriver icon and use generate overrides then choose create inspector GUI. You don't need to manually type anything most of the time. I think Rider is also a grade, but I mostly use Visual Studio code and have never used Rider. But if you save this and check again, nothing will change. This is because our custom inspector wants to take a visual element as a return type. Now you might ask, what is a visual element? A visual element is basically a container that holds different UI elements like buttons, images, etc. If you haven't watched my UI toolkit video, I would prefer you watch that first. So it becomes completely clear what we're talking about here. Now let's create visual element and return it. To create it, you simply need to do is create one variable name root and create new instance of visual element. And in the return type, will return the root. After doing this much, if we now look at our inspector, you can see the inspector is currently empty because there's nothing inside our root visual element. Now let's create a label and add it to the root element. After doing this, now we'll see that hello is visible in your inspector. So you could manually create UI elements using C sharp. For example, add a label, set its text and add it to the root. But that gets messy fast. A much easier method is to use the UI builder and design the layout visually. First, in your project, create a folder named UI. Inside this folder, go to create UI toolkit, UI document, name it inventory, double click it to open the UI builder. Now, the UI builder creates UIs for runtime by default, but we're building an editor inspector, so we need to change the usage. In the top right corner of the UI builder, click the drop down and set it to editor extension authoring. This lets Unity know it's for editor time use only. You'll get a message confirming that now you can use editor only controls. Now drag and drop a visual element into the hierarchy. Then drag and drop a label inside it and set the text field to hello. We did the same basic thing in code. First, we created a visual element. Then we created a new label and added it to the roots visual element. Here, I've simply done the same thing, but it's much easier visually because we can just drag and drop elements from the elements library. So if I now want to use this inside my script, how would I do that? Simply start by declaring a public visual tree asset. Give your visual tree a name then, where you're working with the root element in your script. You just write visual tree dot clone tree to instantiate the UI. And for now, let's remove all of this and then go to your Unity inspector. The hello text we wrote inside the UI builder will simply be displayed here. Now let's build the interface. We need three things. Item name wishes a text field, item count, which is integer field, and finally sprite selector and image for preview. Start by dragging in a text field and rename the label to item name. 
Next, drag in an integer field and label it item count. Finally, drag in an object field. This will allow us to select the sprite from our assets, but we want to do something special here. We want to preview the selected sprite next to the object field. To do this, drag in a new visual element container. Inside that container, add an image element for the sprite preview. Also place your object field inside the same container. Change the flex direction of the parent container to row so that the sprite and object field appear side by side. Now set flex screw to zero and define a fixed width and height so that everything stays sized correctly. Also set the image background color to black under styles and center the object field by adjusting its align self property. By default, the object field allows selecting any Unity object, audio clips, models, etc. But we want only sprites, so select the object field and go to its object type. Change it to sprite. Now it will only allow selecting sprites from your assets. So currently, you can see that we've named this item sword and set the count to five. We've also selected the sprite, specifically the sword sprite. However, the sprite we're assigning isn't being displayed properly. Additionally, if I click somewhere else and then come back to this item, all the data fields appear empty again. This happens because the data we've created isn't properly bound to the inventory's items. In other words, the fields are not persisting because the binding between the UI and the underlying data is not correctly set up. To fix that, Select each field and set its editor binding path to match the variable names in your inventory script. Like on the text field, you'll see an option called editor binding path. To bind the field to a data property, you simply need to enter the property name there. For example, I'll copy the name of the variable item property and paste it into the editor binding path field. Next, for the item count, I'll follow the same process. Select the field, locate the editor binding path and paste the corresponding property name. Now, if you enter values and click away, they'll persist. Now let's make sure the sprite you select is shown in the black preview box. So to do that, go inside your inventory editor script, query the object field, which retrieves the specific visual element. If you're not familiar with how to use queries or what it is, you can check out my UI toolkit video to know more about it. After finding it, the next thing you need to do is register a callback. This tells the UI system what to do when a specific event happens. So in our case, when the sprite changes, it will run that event. Now watch this line here. We're saying, hey, if there's a change in a Unity object, like a sprite is changed, then call this method called onSpriteChange. You'll probably see an error here at first. That's totally normal. That just means we haven't written the onSpriteChange method yet. So just hover over it and choose Generate Method, and your ID will create the function for you automatically. But here's the thing. The image we want to update isn't sitting right on this visual element. It's actually inside the root of our UI layout. So we need access to that root element too when the callback runs. So we modify the code like this. Now what we're doing here is using a lambda function to pass both the event and the root visual element into our callback method. This lets our method know not only what changed, but also gives it access to the full UI hierarchy. Now inside this method is where we're going to update the image based on the new sprite. Here's the first thing we do inside the method. So in this line, we're creating a variable called image element. We're using the query function on the root to search for a visual element named image. This name needs to match what you've set in your UXNL file. It's how we find the specific image we want to update. Then we update the sprite with this line here. We're saying, take the new value from the change event, which is a unity object and cast it to a sprite. Then we assign it to the image's background. So we're basically telling the image element, hey, show this new sprite now. And that's the whole process. Once you save everything and go back to the editor, try changing the sprite in the inspector and you'll see the image update instantly in the UI. If you have a custom struct or class as a serialized field, just like I've created a temp struct and made it serializable so that we can initialize it in the inspector. If I save this and then click on the object in the inspector to see, the struct will not be visible because we have not specified this property inside inventory editor class. So you have two ways to specify it. You can do it through code or you can do it using the UI builder. Let's start with the code method and then I'll show you how to do the same thing with the UI builder. So what we're gonna do is bind a property field to a serialized field. First, you create a new property field. Next, you need to set its binding path. This tells Unity which variable it should display. So if your serialized variable is called tense, just write your serialized variable name. After that, we need to add this field to the root visual element. Now, if you save your script and go back to Unity, you'll see that the temps field shows up in the inspector. Okay, now let's look at the second method using the UI builder, which is Unity's visual UI tool. First, open UI builder. 
Then in the library panel, search for property field, drag and drop the property field into your UI layout. Now you've added the field, but we're not done yet. Just like in the code method, you need to set the binding path. Select the property field in the hierarchy. In the inspector on the right side, find the binding path field. Type in temps or just copy and paste it. Now hit save and that's it. You'll see that the field is now automatically linked to your serialized temps variable. All right, so right now, when we add our element to the inspector, it shows up with a very basic look. Just the default layout, nothing fancy. But I want to change that. I want it to look better, more custom, more polished. So how can we do that? To achieve that, we need to create a property drawer. If you're working with a struct or a custom class and you want to control how it appears in the inspector, then creating a custom property drawer is the way to go. If you're customizing a mono behavior, you use the editor class. But for custom data, like a struct or a class, you need a property drawer. All right, so first, head over to your editor folder in Unity. Inside that folder, create a new c -sharp script. Let's name it tempd, which stands for temporary property drawer. Once the script is created, go ahead and open it up. You can delete everything inside so we can start clean. Now, we're going to make this script inherit from property drawer. Also, don't forget to use the custom property drawer attribute and pass in the type you want to customize. In our case, that's going to be temp. Next, override the create property GUI method. This is where we'll define how the custom property drawer will appear. But instead of writing out the layout in C Sharp, we'll use UXML to design it visually. So go to your UI folder or create one if it doesn't exist and then create a new UXML file. Let's name it temp. Open that file and inside, start by adding a visual element as your root element, as your root element. Give it a black background just to have some basic styling in place. Now within that visual element, add two float field elements. These will represent the two float values in our temp struct. Rename into something like float field one and float field two and set their default values to zero. Once that's done, save the UXML file. Now back in the script, load the UXML asset inside create property GUI and return it as the custom UI for your property draw. You might notice that when you try to type values like five or four into the fields and they immediately vanish. That's happening because we haven't set up the binding paths yet. So go back to the UXML file, select each float field and under the editor binding section, make sure to set the binding paths to match the property names from your data structure. Save the file again, and now the data should persist correctly when you edit it. So as you can see, creating a custom editor using the UI toolkit is actually pretty straightforward once you understand the workflow. Whether you're designing the layout visually with UXML or writing it in code, the flexibility you get is seriously powerful. Just keep this in mind. If you're customizing a class or struct and you want to define how it looks inside the inspector, use a property draw. That's the one you inherit from. But if you're working with a mono behavior or a scriptable object, then you'll want to create a custom editor class instead. And that's it for today's video. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.